Hey everybody, we are back live here with our Border Collie or Yellow Labrador tutorial. We're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to talk about something that's actually pretty magical. I think it's, it's pretty cool. And last time we looked at training a convolutional neural network from scratch to predict whether or not the dog was a Border Collie or a, uh, a Yellow Labrador. All the code is up in the repository. The readme is, is kind of filled out nicely. I've got links to the videos. The first three we worked on Bill Gates versus Jeff Bezos and didn't do all that well. And now we're working on an easier problem so we can develop some additional concepts for, for hands-on applied uh, machine learning strategies. And today we're going to talk about visual similarity, meaning how can we figure out using this model that we made what images are more similar to one another. And that's actually pretty cool, right? Like Google, Facebook, lots of companies rely on finding similar images. They can't, you know, the, the big signal is just the picture itself. You don't need to rely on links like Google PageRank or some other strategy like, you know, Jeff has photos of trains and, and John works at a train company, so maybe he has photos of trains. You know, it's just looking at the raw images and we're going to find you know what images are similar to one another so the first thing I wanted to do was remember I think last time after we talked about finding the indices which we mislabeled I, I was plotting one of the Labradors that we messed up and I didn't really have a good explanation for this one but since we mainly have yellow Labradors this Labrador is a chocolate lab or a black lab and since most border collies are black that's probably why the algorithm misclassified it but on to the fun stuff. So image similarity. Let's talk about this. So we have the model here that we built and how do we start even thinking about similarity? So let's look at the layers. So we have a convolutional layer followed by an activation. We do max pooling, dropout, and you know this pattern repeats itself a few times. If you look at the larger networks that are talked about in lots of research papers, this will just scroll on forever. But we have a pretty simple network. Now one thing we could do is we could say, okay, we know that dense one has a shape of none by 96. And this dense one is, is basically where a lot of the data is kept that gets passed into some kind of a, a prediction, right? So maybe we can get a 96 dimensional vector out of it. So here's, here's how you do this, right? We know what the layer name is that we want, dense one. We found it right here by looking at model summary. After we know what we want, we can create an intermediate model. So we use Keras model, where the input is our model input that we trained. This is the model that we trained, this is the input. And the output is that model. It has a, a method called get layer, and it's the layer name's output. So we already know what that is. We specified that layer name right here. So then I set up a new generator so we can run some predictions, right? I'm using all the training data. So we have, you know, I think it was a thousand images. We're doing a batch size of one. We're just going one by one. We're not going to shuffle. We want all the methods of the generator to, to be in order, the file names and stuff. And we're calling it for a thousand steps because it's doing one, bat, one item at a time per batch. And so basically that's going to give us an output and it's going to be 1000 by 96. So 1000 images and each image is described by a 96 dimensional vector. So for instance, this is, you know, one of the images. That's what describes it. It has a shape of 96. So now we start getting into where the application can get caught up in lots of theory. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I took a linear algebra class in college. I did a little bit of graduate mathematics, applied math, not theoretical. And I sort of recall what this is. I found it on Stack Overflow. For the math inclined, this is how you would take that intermediate output, which is uh, 1,000 rows by 96 columns and compute a similarity matrix between uh, so basically for any given photo you could say which for for photo 5 what other photos most similar to it so 
basically you start off by taking the dot product of the intermediate output with itself transposed so that's kind of you can think of that as a similarity structure then you sort of have to find the diagonal of that and he's calling that square squared magnitude so and this kind of math comes up a lot it's not just for image similarity you know multiplying things by the transpose of the thing and then doing some matrix operations it's it's quite common recommender systems matrix factorization schemes it comes up a lot so at least like if you know what the dot product is that's pretty good um, so you do a couple of intermediate calculations I'm not sure if this is really necessary but he looked like a pretty smart dude um, and you finally you keep going down you end up with this variable called cosine and cosine is going to be a matrix and the shape is going to be a 1000 by 1000 so for every image in the row say row 5 is going to represent image 6 because it's zero based indexing the rest of the matrix will give it some score with respect to how similar row 5 is to all the other thousand images so in order to make one thousand pairwise comparisons for 1000 things you need a 1000 by 1000 matrix right so that being said just to get a little more intuition around this when you look at for the first image the zeroth element is probably going to be the highest one because it is itself this is basically one when we look at the, the second image this is going to be one because it's going to have the highest similarity rating because it's with respect to itself when we change it to two this value is going to be one or just about one there it is so as you go in like if you th think about the diagonals of this 1000 by 1000 matrix uh, the diagonal going from left to the bottom right is basically going to be all ones and if we wanted to say now all right that's great but how the hell do we access the similar things let's take uh, we're gonna have to use numpy a little bit so let's take for the first one we can call a, a numpy function called arg sort and that's going to give us the order of the arguments ascending we don't want it ascending so we're going to reverse it and there you can see the closest one is the zeroth one if we change that to looking at the first image the closest one is going to be the first index if we change it to the second image index 2 is going to be the closest one so this might take you a little while to get your head around but I will show you that um, at least this, this uh, like if you just do that it, it, it just reverses the iterable right so hopefully that's not too much of a mystery so now we know how to check so for image say you know eight just take a random image like 800 we know index 800 because that's the image but then they're saying image 722 and 629 are the most similar images so I'm just going to truncate this a little bit look at the first 20 because it's just a lot to look at probably don't care about anything after that so drop down here I got my new load image function and I just I basically copy and pasted the other one and I train I changed the directory to Kali Labrador train because we were looking at in the other function we were loading images from the validation set so that's all good I'm just going to change that so let's let's load up image 800 and we need to do that with um, what did I sim gen file names and we what 800 okay and SimGen, just in case you're wondering because I know when you're watching videos you forget things I've watched a lot of videos uh, good movies too where's our generator yeah we call that SimGen. so yeah SimGen. so that's 800 and now we're kind of thinking about okay what's the next closest image 722 let's load up 722 aha now that might actually be that same puppy dog think think about it. that's the one we just picked then image 722 is going to give us a really similar one 
pretty badass, right? Now let's check 629. We don't have tons of images, so I don't know how similar, you know, how similar or dissimilar they're going to get the further away you go from the closest one. But we could check it out. Okay, yeah, so not that similar. 555. Yeah, so it gets, you know, they're not there are no border collies though, right? Yeah, so, you know, and the similarity could be a function of a lot of things. It could be the color of the dog. It could be the background color. You know, it could be any number of things, right? So let's take another image at random. Let's take, you know, image one, two, three. So what is image one, two, three? And I'll show you a better way to do this. This is a border collie getting it on with a frisbee. So I don't know if there's anything really similar to that, but we'll see. 367. 123, 367. You know, the background is actually really similar. When you look at the background now, it's actually a pretty similar image. Uh, 431. So, yeah, nothing crazy there. Maybe let's take another image, just 50. So, we'll look at 50. Border collie on the grass, and the next closest this in the sea is 286. Yeah, another border collie on the grass, so that actually worked out pretty well. Um, if you're wondering how you can get more like images at once, let's pick one just for show 75. Let's look at 75 real quick. Dark border collie, kind of close up, and that's giving us 213. Yeah, I don't like that one. That's not that good. Let's try 111. Or maybe Yellow Lab do like 852. All right, so what's 852? Oh, that's weird, man. Who knows what's going to come up about that. But it's an illustration. Yeah, that was an illustration. Let's do 877. So I'll check out 877. Border Collie. And that's not a Border Collie. It's a Lab. So 712 might be similar. 746. Yeah, so 712, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, 712 and 746, interestingly enough. So those, those are interesting because that really did pick up a pretty good similar cue. I wonder about 761. Yeah, it's also not bad. So let's, let's take the example of 712. And this will work a lot better with more data. But, it, you know, it did find the puppies. Let's go back to the puppies. I actually like that. So 800, and if we wanted to get a bunch of images, right? So let's say we wanted to get the five most similar puppy images. I'm just gonna say, um, I'm gonna call that puppy. And I'm gonna say puppy images equals uh, load an image to sim alarity well, let's just do it the procedural way. So for, what did we call that data structure? We call it puppy. For P and puppy, let's just print P so we're not going crazy. Yeah, these are the indices. And I'm gonna say plt.show, let's say the image, image equals load in image two. And we're gonna have to look it up through uh, the sim sim gen file names and we're going to index that at p and we're going to do a plt dot this is mathplotlib it has an image show function and i'm just going to put image and then i'm going to put plt dot show so hopefully this works i think it will okay image object has no attribute load image well one of them did work load an image to simgem file names p let me get rid of that image object has no attribute load image Let's just print out what image is actually returning. Hang on. If 
for p and puppy image equals load an image to simgen file names p. Yeah, that should be working okay. Is it always failing? Let's take a look. Image object has no attribute load image. What the hell does that mean? Let's figure it out. Namespace conflict. Hmm. Hang on one second. I'm going to figure this out and be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. So I think at some point I overwrote a variable called image. And what actually happened was I had imported an object from Keras preprocessing called image. So there was a bit of a namespace issue there. But in any event, I came back and all I did was I, I prefixed my local. Uh, I changed that, or I don't even know if that mattered, but I did get it to work. You could load an image here. And all I did here was I, I got some, some images and uh, I'm printing them out here. So I used the list comprehension to generate a list of of images loaded via the index from puppy which was the arg sort of the cosine at row 800 looking at the the most you know the highest five scores and uh, you can see there even though it's a relatively small network we did capture the fact that um you know these are all sort of similar photos so uh you know there you have it some other ideas for working on image similarity are, uh, and maybe we'll do this in one of the videos because I'm having a lot of fun here. I'm actually learning a couple of things along the way as I go. Is you can use the image net data and you can run all your images through the image net models and you can sort of do the same model architecture shenanigans that we did and you know take their model mess with the inputs, play with the outputs, and then use the, the generator to predict. And I bet they'll capture a lot more interesting features. So, you know, while we are getting some good results with just our thousand or so dog photos, if you have tons of images, this is one legitimate way to say, hey, here's a way to organize them without knowing anything about them, without having metadata or otherwise. So maybe I'll work on that in the next video. Maybe we'll return to trying to focus on the accuracy of our overall model. Either way, I'm going to save this. Let's, uh, let's push it up to Git. I think I made some changes to the README. So let me pull those down and uh, get status modified. Git add A, git commit M. Uh, Dog similarity stuff. Oh, get add. I don't know why it's not picking that up. Get commit. Get push. And it should be on our way. I'm going to stop this bad boy, get it up to YouTube, and go for a jog. See you, folks.